I've been on the road four weeks and I'm going home tonight. Finally, going home for two days, coming back out Monday. I already got my next load and you already know, Elwood City, Pennsylvania. So yeah, <laughs> let's see how that goes. But I want to share with you something I read this morning. And I know that many of you have probably already heard this verse several times and misquoted and overquoted or whatever. I just want to share it with you anyway. And I bring this verse up because I've had people leave comments on this channel talking about, um, you know, they don't want to watch the videos if it's got a Bible verse in it. Well, I'm going to keep doing it because I'm a Christian and uh, the Bible clearly, Jesus himself clearly states, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words <laughs> in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. So you're ashamed of the gospel. You're ashamed to tell people that you're a Christian. You're ashamed to quote a little bit of scripture in a YouTube channel. Well, you don't want to follow somebody that does that. It's okay. The fool has said in his heart there is no God. Comment says, why OTR so much in-town work? In other words, there's so much in-town local work available. Why did you go over the road? Okay, here's the reason. And another, someone else left a comment below this stating exactly what I'm about to say. So you can read it on the screen here, but I'll just tell you. If you live pretty close to work, to a company that's local, you want to be a local driver, the company's right down the street from you, great. You should probably do that instead of going over the road or running a regional route. I know sometimes money is a factor in where, what you're going to be doing. Some of you guys need to make a six-figure income. Some of you guys are okay making 75 or 80 grand and being home every day. Sometimes that's worth it. But it also depends on the type of work it's going to be, right? I mean, if you're LTL, you can probably make 90 grand by now, probably 85, 90 grand a year, run P&D and be home every day. Or you can run over the road with that same company and make 120, 130 a year, depending on the company. So money is a big factor in that. Also, the distance you live from that company plays another huge factor. For me personally, you guys already know, I live an hour away from any so-called in-town work. <laughs> so I would be driving an hour to work, working throughout the day and then driving an hour home. Now, if it was only an eight hour work day, it wouldn't be a bad deal if the money was right. But this is trucking. This isn't a 40 hour work week. A 40 hour work week is almost impossible as a truck driver. You know, you guys running over the road and running local, the only difference is your home time. Everything else, uh, well, the money is a little different, but home time and money is different. But you're still going to be working the same amount of hours every week between 50 and 70. You're working the same hours every single week. And once you know that, then you can determine, okay, I want to be local. And being local is great. There's no bad thing that's going to come from running local. The problem for me is the distance. All right, well, 34-hour break is over. Went home for a couple of days. It is now Monday night. Um, <laughs> I, I was planning on coming out of here Sunday night, but um, I had a funeral over the weekend, sadly, and uh, went home for the funeral and, uh, anyway, got back Sunday night and decided, you know, I really would like to take another day just in case. And anyway, like I said, Monday night, I'm leaving out. No big deal. I'm still going to be there maybe half a day early rather than a whole day early. Last week, or maybe it was the week before last, I was telling you guys, I could not see my complete 
duty hours, right? I couldn't see all of my hours of service while the truck was sitting still, but now I can. Look at that. For some reason last week, it was not allowing me to do that, but now after a hard reset, um, you know, it came up, it's working just fine. <laughs> First and foremost, I want to thank everybody for helping me get up to 5,300 subscribers. Now, if only I could get everybody to watch. <laughs> but in reality, that's just the way things go. Only about 10% watch. Maybe uh, maybe half, half of you guys will watch sometimes. So that's great, man. Thanks for coming back and watching, following along, see how I do. Um... I'm going to address a few comments here. Just comments I've gotten here recently. And uh, hopefully it'll help you guys. I know I've... Some of these comments I get a lot of. And so I thought, well, hey, you know what? I'll just go ahead and address it in the video. And maybe it'll go ahead and answer some questions you guys already have. You're watching this video. Maybe you, you have this question. never thought about it. Someone else has already asked it. I'll go ahead and answer it for you. Here's a good one. No recaps with company. You know, when it comes to running recaps, um, <clears throat> first of all, recaps come back on your eighth day, for those who don't know. For those who, like me, don't typically run recaps. So what that means is if you started your week on a Monday, you would be able to run recaps the following Tuesday. There's eight full days. Monday to Monday would be seven days, but Monday to Tuesday. So I have come close to where I thought I'd be running a recap. And my 34-hour reset was over. Or it was one of those situations where, like, well, I can just wait another four hours, take my break four hours longer, and I'll have my full 70 back versus... 11 or 12 hours right so i always take a 34 no matter what i'm never in a situation where i have to run recaps i'm only speaking from my own experience some guys in other divisions maybe or uh, guys running specialty products out of another terminal they may have a different answer for you but for me personally i'm always able to do a 34 either on the road or at home usually it's my own choice and if you want to run uh, Arkansas to Pennsylvania and back three times in a pay period, you will spend 134 on the road. Otherwise, you're just not going to make it. So that's been my experience. I've never had to run recaps. Like I said, when it comes to uh, other divisions within the CAG network, man, I'm completely blinded. I have no idea. I don't have any clue. None. Zero. I only know what I do. You know what I mean? 
All right. Do you prefer to run through the night or is that just how they work you? I know parking is tough these days. Just curious. As long as you get it to the customer before the appointment time, you're going to be fine. So you kind of choose how you're going to run it and when you're going to run and which route you're going to take. No one has ever said anything to me about take this route or take that route, at least in Arkansas. You know, they've no one's ever said uh, the routes I'm taking are are too far or or whatever. So I take the uh, I try to take the fastest route and the route that saves me the most time. So uh, I've had that question before too about micromanagement at the company. The answer to that is no. I have zero micromanagement uh, here, at least like I said, out of Arkansas. No micromanagement whatsoever. They're not calling you. They're not asking you what you're doing. It's a it's a regular trucking company. You know, you come in, you do your job. If you're late and you didn't communicate that you were going to be late, I'm sure there's probably some kind of communication that's going to happen there. But I, you guys have got to communicate. I do know truck drivers that fail to communicate and their paychecks suffer. But I'm just going to tell you, as long as you communicate and you communicate thoroughly and you communicate way ahead of time everything will be okay with you uh working here so um <clears throat> but when it comes to schedules and stuff i run the night shift simply because i like running the night shift like i tell you uh, i ran the night shift for five years and for like a year and a half before i came here i was you know kind of in the in the night shift and then in the day shift in the night shift day shift I just prefer, if I'm going to do one or the other, I'd much rather be at night. Depends on the route, though, for me, personally. But no, the company does not make me <laughs> run at night. It's completely up to me. Because like I said in it just a while ago, they give you, might give you three days, you know, to run 750 miles. Okay? So, yeah, you can come in late Monday night and pick that load up. You'll be up there, you know, Tuesday night and 10 hours later or whatever um, you know, you'll be up there at the customer to deliver Monday or Wednesday. But like I said, they give you, I mean, you come in on a Monday to pick up a 1500 mile turn. Well, I mean, you ain't got to be there till Wednesday. So Monday to Wednesday to run 750 miles, you know, it's up to you how you run it when you leave out with it, so on and so forth. Can't you do PC to go eat? Personal conveyance is PC. And that's what this uh, viewers talking about, well, you know, here's the thing, uh, CAG as a whole, I don't believe has a problem with using PC. I've used it three times and no one has ever said anything. And that was before I was told by <laughs> my terminal manager and a lady in our office says no one at this terminal is allowed to use that. Well, even when I did use it before I even know that was a rule here. Uh, no one ever said anything to me, but I think the PC rule is 30 minutes. Could be something different. I'm not sure because my terminal, all of us, the drivers here, we're not allowed to use that. So um, I cannot use PC to go eat. And I get this question a lot too. Are you a lease driver or company driver? I am a company driver. I don't even know if CAG does a lease purchase. I do know they hire owner operators and I've spoken to two different owner operators. One was a fuel hauler. The other one actually runs out of this terminal and I was told they pay 65% of the load. So whatever the rate is on that load, you're getting 65% of that. And the rates, as you guys know, like running the spot market, it goes up and down. So I don't know how well they're doing. All I know is one guy, the guy that runs here, he drives a Peterbilt 389 you know, big sleeper, big pipes, you know, big engine. I mean, he's, he's got a really nice truck, and those trucks ain't cheap. They're like 240 grand. So I think he's doing okay. Um, yeah, but as far as lease driver or company driver, I'm a company driver. Can you work at a tanker company Monday through Friday? The answer is yes, you can. In fact, you can work here Monday through Friday. I just choose to take the loads with the most miles to reap the most financial reward. And 
you know, I don't have to do that. If they would give me one load, for example, we have a load that goes to a customer in Illinois. That plant is open 24-7. Yeah, you know, it'll, you'll get the information. It'll be like, pick the load up Monday, deliver it on Wednesday. Well, if you pick the load up on Monday, you can deliver it Tuesday, be back at the terminal on Wednesday picking up another one, deliver it on Thursday, and be home on Friday. You could do that in five days, and that would pay you like uh, 3,044 miles, you know, plus another $200 for the drop and hook each time. So whatever that would, would equal out to, that's what you'd make. So you could certainly do that and probably make anywhere from 112 to 115 a year. As long as that load never canceled and you did two of those a week, it'd be Monday through Friday, five days a week. So it is uh, possible. And um, I'm sure there are other tanker companies that allow you to do the same thing. Not real sure about that. But yeah, CAG, for sure, you can do that. Which retirement plan vendor does CAG use? Well, the thing is, open enrollment's coming around pretty soon at the end of this month, end of October. And I did get an email, and it said that our new 401k program, um, and apparently you can now uh, throw your money into a Roth IRA as well, so you can do both. And I believe that company is called Principal. You guys have ever heard of them. And I think you're 100% vested at five years. That's how they do it now, uh, starting at the end of October. Before that, I'm not, I don't remember what it was. I get a lot of questions too about cameras in the truck. We do have one camera in the truck. It's right there, upper center of the windshield, and it only looks out. It does not look at you while you're driving. It doesn't look at you while you're in the sleeper or any of that. It only looks out. And, you know, if you're following too close, it'll go off. You know what I mean? Uh, you may have to watch a video. You may not have to watch a video, but you will have to sign some kind of documentation saying you were coached on it or whatever. Um, but we do have forward-facing cameras, and they also record audio. So when that camera goes off, whatever you're saying inside the cab of this truck, it picks it up. There are cameras, but they're forward-facing only, all right? A few videos back, I posted um, a paycheck showing the gross and net income of a bi-weekly paycheck. It was like $4,300 uh, gross check. And so this viewer had a question, is this like a normal paycheck? He says, I started in two weeks and I'm worried about the New Jersey and Colorado runs. Do those runs give you a hard time? I don't have a hard time running New Jersey. Colorado, I don't I've never ran there with CAG, so I'm not sure. But I'll tell you this, for most for the most part, all the customers I've been to, I can't really think of one that has given me a hard time. Most of them are really easy to work with. Uh most of the time they're happy that you're there. Like, all right, great, man. We got our product in because these guys are gonna use that product to make something else and send it out most of the time or they're going to use whatever you bring in to clean their pipes or tanks or whatever you i don't know what you're going to be hauling uh but colorado i'm not sure what even goes out to colorado um new jersey uh i run to elizabeth new jersey or is it elizabeth yeah elizabeth new jersey so it's just right inside of new jersey right on 95 i think i run 95 for like 10 miles and bam it's right there you know, there's a big bridge that goes over to Staten Island right there. Well, I actually deliver to a place right beneath that bridge. I don't even have to cross that bridge. So I don't have a hard time there. It's kind of a first come, first serve customer as well. Real easy to get along with. Like I have no customers here have ever given me a hard time. Uh, not even security. You know, I know it, it, this is different than like a drive in or a reefer company where you pull in and they're giving you a hard time at the gate and making you do this and making you do that and yelling at you and treating you like crap. No, 
I have not experienced that, not even once working for CAG. So I'm going to tell you from my past experiences with other companies and with my experience here, uh, I would say we have the best customers, man. We got <laughs> we got really good customers here as compared to what I have done in the past. This is a great place as far as that goes. And um, is that a normal paycheck, $4,300 gross paycheck for two weeks? So that's like $2,150 gross per week if you break it down. That can be a normal paycheck. You know, like I said, it depends on, you got to think too, my terminal doesn't pay the highest cent per mile, but it typically averages out to 70 cents per mile. So think about every every load I run is basically paying 70 cents per mile, gross. Uh, but we have terminals that pay 88 cents, 78 cents, anything in between. I've even heard 91 cents out in, in uh, Charlotte. So, you know, it really depends on your terminal, the contract they have with the customer they're servicing, and, and that sort of thing. So um, I don't think you're going to have a hard time making a hundred grand if that's what you're looking for. I don't think you're going to have a hard time doing it as long as your equipment holds up. <laughs> Do CAG terminals have laundromats? I don't know about all of them because I had we have 300 terminals, so I don't know what which terminal has what, but my terminal does not have a laundromat. Does CAG help with relocating? I don't know. You may want to speak to recruiter or a uh, terminal manager about that. I don't know if they'll do that or not. Where are the terminals at? I don't know, man. They're right here in the United States of America just and some in Canada. Uh, just go to the cag.com and I mean you, you can look for jobs, apply as a driver, but before you apply, you can search for terminals in your area. They got like a map you just type in like your zip code or something, bam, all these terminals will start popping up that are near you. And if they're hiring, you'll see ads for those jobs underneath that. So check it out. Hey, Arnold. I know, man. I haven't forgot about you. Let's see the CB setup. All right. I'm about to show you. Yeah, the CB setup is basically that. I mean, it's just in there like... It's just in there in the factory setting or what have you. And of course it comes with a unit in mic. I do have a noise canceling mic. It's all chromed out. would actually match the radio. But man, hardly anybody's on these things anymore. So, yeah, I mean, I, I turn it on and run it. But when I turn it on, it's, uh, it, it's pretty much silent most of the time. So, But that's a CB setup, man. It's nothing to it really. It's just that, you know, it was installed by the company or by Peterbilt, I'm not sure, but that, that came with the truck, so, yeah, I'm not pulling that out. Don't ask me to, please, because <laughs> I'm not going to, because that thing is in there pretty good, it looks like, and uh, yeah, so that's that. I think today is one of those rare times where my trailer is actually on the other side of the plant. Nine out of ten times it's on this side, and every once in a while it's on the other side. I used to check that other side every time I came in the gate because it's so close to the exit, but since I've discovered over the past almost a year now, Nine out of ten times it's over here. I just go ahead and come over here first. So the thing about this load is I am picking it up later. 
than I actually had to. I could have picked this load up Sunday night, to be honest with you. But it's Tuesday morning right now. It's about 3 a.m. And I'm still going to be there 12 hours early. Or thereabouts. Something like that. So the load's still going to be early. And of course it's Elwood City. So are they going to take me Wednesday night when I get there? Or are they going to force me to wait until Thursday morning? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to be there early. And I'm hoping to get back down here Friday and pick up another one. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep doing this at least until the end of the year, probably. Unless I can find a Midwest run that I can do it twice a week, you know. All I had to do was turn my head to the left. It's a little dark over here, but this first trailer sticking out is mine. <laughs> wow. like I told you before, every time we pick up a trailer, we scale it out at the plant where we picked it up at. And these scales are very... Well, I don't really know how accurate they are because I never went to get a scale ticket afterwards to try to compare the two, but I've been 79,000 pounds before on this scale, and I've made it through the uh, weigh station just fine. I never asked questions. I never got pulled around. So everything checks out. 